Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to our daily strength today with our rhapsody of realities. Father, we thank you for your grace. You. Indeed, we're going to increase from glory to glory Amen. as your word abides in us and we abide in your words. Amen. In our Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Today's topic we have, we are his holy sanctuary. We are his holy sanctuary. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, from Psalm 68, verse 8, it says, The earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. So this tells us what happened at the Mount, of, at, at the Mount, Mount Sinai, right? That the earth shook at the presence of God. We you know the powerful thing that has, as God has done with us these last days. He has given us just some God presence that God the earth shook. Now God dwells in you. That means you are the Lord's presence. That means anywhere you enter, you are carrying God with you. So if the earth shook because God came there, he said, and Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. That means the mountain itself moved at the presence of God. And you, yeah, 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 yes, um, um, yeah, 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 you and I, we are privileged to be called the holy sanctuary of the Lord. That means the lost indwelling place. We carry God everywhere we go. The Bible says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The day you got born again, what happened to you and I? We received the Spirit of God inside of us, right? Now, Christ in us is the hope of glory. So we are carriers of God inside of us. God dwells in us. That's the Father. He dwells in us by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. First, that, that, that was from 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16. That means you are God's house, His holy sanctuary. God's house, His holy word, sanctuary. Do you know the privilege we have? That we can carry God everywhere we go. In Hebrews 3 verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Why do you call us partakers of the heavenly calling? We are carriers of God. Partakers. So the day you got born again and received Christ in you, that was the day you became what? A partaker of this word, heavenly calling. And now you carry God in you. That same presence of God that shook the mountain. Now, you are the one carrying God. That everywhere you enter, you shake nations. You shake, you shake nations when you enter nations. You shake um, families when you enter families. You shake cities when you enter cities. Amen. For you are a carrier of God's, you are, you are God's presence. You carry God everywhere you go. That's why the Bible says, what? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. Right? So we are solution providers. Just the way that Mount Sinai was shaking because God's presence was found there. Now, you are carrying God's presence that anywhere you enter... Things are shaking for good. Hallelujah. Colossians 1 verse 22, it says, God made peace with us, God made peace with you, and now he lets you stand in his presence as people who, ha- who are holy and faultless and innocent. Now one will ask, how is it, that, how is it possible that God is, God's presence shook a mountain, but here is God living in me, making his abode in me, having to call my body his own inner sanctuary. Why? How is it possible that God could you know, have to make my body to be his living tabernacle? It's very simple by the grace of God. Because of what? He can be one with you now because of what? He has reconciled you back to himself. He has given the gift of righteousness. So there's nothing that limits you or there's, no bar- there's no, you know, nothing that, that separates you from the Father. Because of his love towards you. And my son is his son, Jesus Christ, who died for the, for the sins of you and I. And now we can be reconciled back to him. Right? So he says what? God, God, God made peace with you. So because God has made peace with you, that's why he can have his abode in you. He made peace with you. When two people are not at peace with each other, they will stay in the same house. They will go separated, in separate ways. And now God has made peace with you. Because he loves you so much. He has to reconcile you back to himself by what coming to in the human flesh. God himself and came in the, in the, you know, became flesh. Right? That's the word of God, became flesh, right? And then sacrificed his body for you on the cross of Calvary. 
buried your sin and everything and rose back to life, and, uh, right? On the third day, now you have risen with him so that together you can live in this kingdom called the kingdom of Christ. And now, now, what? now in this kingdom, because of you have given his gift of righteousness, he has made you righteous by his own cause. He has come inside of you as the spirit of God to help you live the righteous cause he has brought you into. Right? And now, because he has made his abode with you, how is he able to make that? Because I made peace with you. And now let and now let and now he lets you stand in his presence. You see that? Yeah. As people who are holy and faultless and innocent. Bible says there's no condemnation to them that is in Christ Jesus. Why is that? Why is that there's no condemnation? Because you have been made what faultless. You have been made holy. You have been given the gift of righteousness. So at the first place, it was not based on your own works. It was given to you as a gift. Which means what? Even if you did something wrongly, it's a gift. You never did got it for your own works. So because it began in your life as a gift, it remains in your life as a gift. You understand that? Glory be to God. But it's expected of you and I that what we make, we put to good work this thing that we have received in Him. We put to good work the gift we have received in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that the gift that has come to make us what has been given to us what to make us holy and blameless before Him. So you receive the gift of righteousness so that you can what live righteously before God. That means He has given His very own nature of righteousness. And what's the essence of giving the nature of righteousness? So you can be found holy and blameless before Him. You see that? So it's not just a gift of righteousness for one to receive and think he can go back into the world and be committing sin and claim that the gift is speaking for him. The gift has come to help you live righteously. You see that? So he has given the gift of righteousness so that that nature of righteousness is now in you. His very own nature is now in you. By giving his very own presence, now God dwells in you. So that your own body, your, now just the way Jesus walked on earth and lived righteously before the Father. No sin was found in him. You can live blameless on this earth as well. By his spirit has given you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Think about that. Then Ephesians 1 4 says, According as his according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Hallelujah. Amen. You see that? So the gift of righteousness has come to make you what? That you should be found what? Holy and without blame. So what is God, what God's presence in your life has come to make you what? Holy and without blame. Right? It says what? Before him in love. Everything about the Lord is love. From onset has been love. He said that as God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. He said, what can separate us from the love of the Father? Nothing. Nothing. So the Father loves you so much. All that he has done for you and I is based on what? How much he loves us. He loves you more than you can love yourself. He wants a better life more than you can ever have the, the thought of you having a better life. Right? So in this life he has given you, the life of what? Of, 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 of grace. Overflowing grace. Now to help you live this life and live to the fullest, he has come to have his abode in you. Hallelujah. Amen. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. By the Father's love, that he has come out to be one with you. In fellowship with the Father. That you have your fellowship with the Father. And not to suppress you from the, from, from the Father. What a privilege, what a privileged sons of God we are. Glory. Now let's take, um, our, our, our Bible reading from Colossians 1. This is something there. There is nothing that's between you and the Father any longer. He has made you holy. By this love that demonstrated towards you in his son Jesus Christ. By sending his son who came and what? Paid the price for your sin. Now he has reconciled you back to himself. Colossians 1, 22 to 23, I'll read that. Even though you were once distanced from him, living in the shadows of your evil thoughts and actions, he reconnected you back to himself. He released his supernatural peace to you through the sacrifice of his own body as the sin payment on your behalf on that you would dwell in his presence through the sacrifice of his own body god himself came and took the flesh of a man and sacrificed his own body for you and i you see how much he loves you 
that God can come from heaven, you know, in form of his son, Jesus Christ, right? And then will perform these things for you and I. Reading for that, it says, And now there is nothing between you and, and Father God, for he sees you as holy, flawless, and restored, if indeed you continue to advance in faith, assured of a firm foundation to grow upon. Never be shaken from the hope of the, of the gospel you have believed in. And this is the glorious news I preach all over the world. Hallelujah. Amen. The glorious gospel we have believed in. But it says something very key here. It says, if indeed you continue to what? Advance in faith. Why do you have to advance in faith? By you advancing in faith means what? You are digging more and more of God. You are knowing him more. And by knowing him more, what happens to you? Because you love him, you, you keep his commands. Right? Because you know him more. Now you get to know more of what he has done for you, who he has made you to become. And for, by doing so, searching the scriptures, your love for him is what? Is made known to him as you keep his commands. And by keeping his command, what happens to you? You see yourself what? Walk in his work, in, in the works of what? Righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. So he has come to make his abode in you and it's permanent. It's not a temporal thing he has come to do in your life. It's permanent. He has come to live inside of you forever and ever. That means the fellowship you're having with the Father now, the Spirit of God that is in us, and has the Father, that's the Father in us, right? The fellowship that we have with Him now is, is, is forever and ever. That's, that's what people say, what? Nothing can separate us from the, from the, from the, from, from the love, love of God. Why? He has come to love you before, you say you loved him before you loved him. That means you're not the one that chose him. You say, I've chosen you. Right? So she chose to love you. You know, you know what, what it means for a man to choose to love a fellow man? That means, in, in, irrespective of what the man is doing wrong, I just want to love him. I just choose to love you. When you hear a man tell you, I choose to love you, that means what? Whether you have you've done some things right or done something wrong, it doesn't change the fact that he loves you. That means he's, he's not dependent on your actions any longer. On his own, he decided to just love you. There are people that, there are people that, they will do something so key that you are like, I just have to find a way to repay you good, no matter whatever you have done. You know, someone I mean. For example, now, maybe when you are growing up, there was this particular um, woman that loved you so much and she showed you, pampered you a lot, gave you the things that your parents were not giving you then when you are growing up. Showed you so much love. Now you, you love the woman so much because of, you saw how much she loved you, right? And so the woman had passed on. She now died. Now you are a grown man. And by God's, and God has blessed you financially. Now you are looking at just the way David said, is there anybody of the household of Saul that is remaining? That may repay the person good. Right? That's how David was drawn. Like, he wants to just pay back the good thing that Jonathan has done for him. Now when he found Jonathan's son, he said for, your, for, your, for the sake of your father, Jonathan. Now that, that, that Jonathan's son ate on his table for the rest of his life. You see that? So you may, it doesn't matter whatever that, that young man, you know, you know, whether the Jonathan's son does anything wrong or right, David has made up his mind to bless him. That he will not have to go through any stress again in his life for the sake of who? Jonathan. You understand that now? So there's something that, just like you now, now, now you, have, you decide that maybe that woman has passed on, maybe she has got some children. You then decide, for the sake of this woman, I just want to pay her back. I just want to love her. Now, I've chosen to love her children. So it doesn't, it's not dependent on what the children do again, whether they did it wrong or did it right. For the sake of this woman, I will love these children. These, children, these are children. I will show the children much love that, that she showed to me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So that's for the sake of who, for the Lord has loved you so much. And he has loved you beyond measure. Not to separate you from his love that he has for you. And he has come to make his abode in you. Don't you realize that that's from 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16 to 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17, it says, Don't you realize that together you have become God's inner sanctuary and that the Spirit of God makes his permanent home in you. Makes his what? Permanent home in you. That's why I'm explaining this to us. So this love is not based on you making any works any longer. It's not based on your actions any longer. It is based on what he has loved you with, what permanent love. So he has come to make his abode in you. Now, if someone, discre- uh, if someone desecrates God's inner sanctuary, 
God will desecrate him. For God's inner sanctuary is holy. And that is exactly who, who you are. So you are the holy ones of God. That Bible says about what? Let us what? Peculiar people, holy nation. We are the holy ones of God. So any man that tells you that because of grace, you can go and be a man of sin, a man committing sin, and grace has caused, have got you covered. That person has come from where? The pit of hell. Because grace has come to enable you, to empower you to do the things that are right before God. Grace of God has been released upon us as a what? Empowerment. It has empowered us to go in the direction that we have been called to go. Right? So that we can be found holy before God. He has made us holy. And now we can now what? Advance in faith. Advance in faith. And live this very life he has given us. Glory be to God. That's why if you look at the book of Hebrews 3 verse 1, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, you are now made holy. You are now made what? Holy. You are now made holy, and each of you is invited to the feast of your heavenly calling. To the feast of what? Your heavenly calling. So when men see you, they must see Christ in you. They must see you represent Christ as the image of Christ. You must see the image of Christ in you. And the image of Christ is the image of what? Holiness. Because when even Christ Jesus, what qualified him to have conquered the, the devil and his cause in, in, in hell, was what? He was found holy and blameless. Right? He said that the, the God of this world has come, the God of this dark world has come, come for him, right? But you will not find anything of, his, of, him, of himself in him. That is how your life should be. That is how your life should be, you and I. So fasting your thoughts fully unto Jesus, whom we embraced as our apostle and king priest. You see that? So fasting your thoughts on who? On King Jesus. So that you can walk just the way you walked on this earth, holy and blameless. That is what is expected from you and I today. And we can walk what? As holy and blameless. Glory be to God. That's the, that's the reason why Jesus came. He came to make us what? Holy and blameless. He came to make us holy and pure. That's why he came. So he didn't just come that, you know, that you will be a person that when you accept him, you start begin to struggle to live holy. The holiness for you to live holy has given the state of holiness. He has brought you to himself and given the spirit of holiness. The spirit of God is called what? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Meaning that what? Because now you have received the spirit of God, he will teach you all things and make you what? He will help you live holy. He will direct you to your path so that you will be found what, as a man that lives holy. That means that the very nature of God that is in you, because God is holy, right? God is holy. That means what? The very nature of God that is in you makes you live holy. But how do you now begin to walk in His holiness? By you what? Advancing in faith. That means what? Feeding on the Word of God. When a child of God doesn't feed on God's Word, doesn't keep, keep his word, um, 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 sight on, on the Lord Jesus, you begin to go the right way around. That's why it says what? So fasting your thoughts fully unto Jesus. How do you fasten your thoughts through, fully unto Jesus? Through his word. The word reveals, because it's called the word of God. By you being a man that gets to the word of God and live by the word of God. Of course, through God, we need to teach you the word of God. Your own work is what? Get to the word of God. Fellowship with the word and the spirit. It will make you what? Advance in faith. And by doing so, you live holy before him. For this is the essence. This is the reason why Jesus came. But you better because of what? He has come to give his very own spirit that will help in all these things. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians 5 verse 25 to 27 says. Ephesians 5 to 25 to 27. And to the husbands, you are to demonstrate love to your wives with the same tender devotion that Christ demonstrated to us. His bride. For he died for us, sacrificing himself to make us holy and pure. You see that? Sacrificing himself to make us what? Holy and pure. Cleansing us from the, sh- from the sh- um, showering of, of pure water, showering of pure water, of the word of God. You see that? Cleansing us through the word, cleansing us through the showering of pure water of the word of God. So God's word must abide in you as a child of God. All that he does in us is designed to make us a mature church for his pleasure until we become a source of praise to him, glorious and radiant 
beautiful and holy, without fault or flaw. What a wonderful God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen. You see who we have become in Christ Jesus? You see what Jesus, who Jesus has made you? Holy and pure. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Then Ephesians 1 verse 4 says, According as his According as he has chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Hallelujah. In Exodus 19, when Moses brought the people from the camp to meet God, the Bible tells us that God descended on Mount Sinai with a terrible display of power. The mountain shuddered in whose spasms with smoke billowing from it so much so that the people trembled before the lord god only stepped on it and it was declared a holy mountain do you understand this mount sinai god only did what stepped on it and it was declared what a holy mountain now now imagine you god now lives in you god the father lives in you for the spirit of god is who is god the father he lives in you do you know who you are? If God can only step on Mount Sinai and look at the things that happened, it shook, right? Smoke be, um, um, billowing from it. The things that happened, people, even the people trembled before the Lord. And now you what? Now the Lord God Almighty lives in you. And that mountain was declared as a holy mountain. That's why, that's why we have to understand that what we, who we are today is far much more fetched from, you know, we are far more. Moses doesn't have any closeness to who we are today. Moses being a great prophet, even the Lord said what? John the Baptist was what? Greater than all the prophets. Right? That means John the Baptist is actually declared to be greater than Moses by the Lord. By the Lord Jesus. He declared that to us. Now, if the Lord just can say that even the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than, the, the, um, the, than John, that tells us what? You have much more than what Moses had. Moses have, have, got, have had the privilege of seeing God face to face. Now you have the privilege of communicating with God right there in your spirit. For you have come to make his abode in you. Moses and the children of Israel, they saw the things that God did, the mountain shook. Now the same God that, that shook the mountain now lives in you. That was a, a child of God who walked by faith and lived by faith. Asking God, show me yourself, God, do this one. It sounds beautiful, like a beautiful prayer. And when you hear things like, and God appeared to me, it sounds beautiful. But the truth remains that what? If you can access these things by faith, you have got the higher word, the greater light. The greater light is that watch. Because the lesser light there's a greater light. God made the two great lights that we saw in Genesis yesterday, right? But there was a, there's a great, the lesser light that says in the, day, in the night, and the greater light that says the what in the day. So that means Moses had the lesser light. Those, these are all two great lights, right? So the child of God asking for physical manifestation of things. It looks that whereby you want to say, okay, I want to see um, angels with my physical eyes. It's okay. But it should not be your desire. Let me not say that you desire to see angels. You desire to see, um, um, the Bible says what? Desire to what? We should do what? Desire to what? Spiritual gifts. Right? Spiritual gifts. Right? That means spiritual gifts, not, not things that are based on you trying to have something that will help you walk in faith. Spiritual gifts, you know, there's a gift of faith. When you're a man full of faith, that what? You don't have to see this in your physical eyes, but you just believe it. And then you put the works of faith. That's what pleases the Father. So true, by faith, can you please Him? Right? Not by sight. Are you listening to me? If Thomas had believed the Lord, that believed before seeing the Lord, he would have gained a blessing for that. But he had to not see the Lord and then he believed. You see that? So when a man, when a child of God is asking for physical things, like Lord Moses and, and children of Israel did, he's asking for the lesser light. The greater light is only walking what? By faith. When you know this has been done for you, this things have been done for you, and then enjoy your fellowship with the Father and walk with the Father by faith. When you can communicate with the Father by faith and say, Lord Jesus, how are you doing? You know, talk with the Father, communicate with him. Those ways Moses could communicate with the Lord God Almighty, right? Now you have that consciousness of his presence in you. And when you woke up in the morning, you can say, Good morning, Holy Spirit of God. How are you doing today? It's a glorious day for us to get, get going. You know, when you have that fellowship, right? because of what? The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. His presence made it holy. That's on the mount what Sinai. God's presence made it what holy. That means what your presence makes things what holy. You see that? 
So you are overflowing of the life of God in you. When Jesus says, well, I've come to give them life and give them what? More abundantly. That means what you overflow, what overflows from you, what? Is life. And when life overflows from you, what, what, what does that mean? Things around you become what? To become holy. Glory be to God. So if, if God's presence can make that mountain holy, it means that anywhere you enter with the consciousness of who you are becoming Christ Jesus and as a carrier of God, it means the same way that God's presence made that mountain holy. If you go and you enter any place, what happens? The place becomes what? Holy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now think about the fact that he didn't do in, indwell in the mountain, but he, he indwells in you. So what I want of God is showing us today by the grace of God is a comparison of what happened, the lesser lights, how the mountain shook, and what happened with the mountain and was declared holy. Now you have the greater light. What happens to you and I now? So as a believer, there's something about you. There's something about you. So there's something about me. I'm a child of God. I'm a carrier of God everywhere I go. There's something about you. Do you know who you are? Do you know of what spirit you are? Do you know who you are becoming? Christ Jesus? You know, you're not an ordinary person. The Bible says, calls us what? The God kind. You are God's little children. You are what Bible calls us what? The sons of God. So there's something about you. You are, you are, you are operating from a higher realm. You're not an ordinary person. To have God indwelling in you. Your body has become the sanctuary of the Lord God Almighty. Glory be to God. He that made all things now lives in you. Wow. Glory. But he dwells what he indwells in he, he, he indwells you. Hallelujah. Amen. You are more holy than Mount Sinai. No wonder he tells us in Ephesians 5, verse 25 to 27, that Christ gave himself for us, the church. You see that? Christ did what? Gave himself for us, the church, that he might sanctify and cleanse us with the washing of water by the word and present us to himself glorious glorious glory hallelujah Amen. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that we should be holy and without blemish we should be holy and without blemish and God has come to help us do these things he says, in the last day, I will do these things. Right? He has come to help us. So God is the one working in you, both to will and to do. He is the one doing these things in, in, through you. Uh, all we are called to do is what? Yield to his leadings. Fellowship with his word and his spirit. But we will be being obedient to the word of the voice of God that is inside of us. Now you will make our life to be a wonder to the world. You become a wonder to your world. Men will wonder who, are, who, who, is, who is this person? And by doing so, what happens? They will encounter this marvelous light through you. Right? And by, by, by encountering that light through you, what happens? Now they then to become what? Partakers of this word, divine nature. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Do you know who you are? He says that by according to the power that is at work in you. The power is at work in you. It was the power of God that shook this mount, that, that, that shook that mountain. Now everything about who, everything about God is inside of you. All that he is is inside of you. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. But we should be holy and without blemish. Blessed be God. If you know you're not holy without, without blemish yet, that means you're not yet born again. This is time to get born again. So that Jesus can present you to himself as a, a glorious word, child, with, uh, as a glorious church. He can be now presented in, 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 the, in, in the son Jesus, Right? Having what being what declared holy and without without what blemish, it's time for you to get born again, and you can be born again now by confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For Jesus is the one that came and and what sacrificed His body. He is God. He that came in the form of a flesh and now took up the, the flesh of a man, right? We call it what the Son of Man. He took up the flesh and what and then sacrificed His body on the cross for you and I. So by confessing Jesus, now you can what your sins can be what forgiven. You can receive that forgiveness that has given us in the Son Jesus Christ. So that sin will not stand against you and God any longer. And now you can be brought into this newness of life, into the kingdom, the heavenly kingdom realm, where you can now reign with God. When God can now have his abode in you. 
You are binding him and you are binding you. Hallelujah. Amen. So declare these words with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I accept you as, as my Lord and Savior. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your price. For, thank, thank you for the price you paid for my sins. Thank you for the price you paid for my sins. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I receive the Spirit of God in me. I receive the Spirit of God in me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm a son of God from this day. I'm a son of God from this day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For your finished work in my life. For your finished work in my life. I'm born again. I'm born again. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Now you are born again. Congratulations. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying now. Take a prayer from Rhapsody of Realities. Congratulations. You are born again. Congratulations. I can check yourself. If there be any sickness in your body, I declare you healed now in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Anything that is, in, uh, that is not in order, I command it to come to order now in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. I cleanse you of any blood disease. I cleanse you of any sickness, Amen. anything that is contrary that is in your body. I Amen. cleanse it from you right now, from the hair of your head to the soles of your feet. Amen. I declare you cleansed my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Diabetes is, that sugar is cleansed from you. Amen. I declare that diabetes is healed from your body now, my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. I declare you strong and healthy. Amen. I declare you strong and healthy. Amen. Whatever you have fought with in time past, you fight with it no more from this day upwards. Amen. The struggles of life you face before you face them no longer, my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Now you are set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Function in who you, the Lord, has made you to be. Amen. Fully in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. For the yokes are broken. And they are set free now. Congratulations. Amen. Hallelujah. That demonic oppression is cast out from you now. Amen. That devil is out from you, my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. The lame begin to walk. The blind begin to see. Amen. Yes. Now, if you couldn't talk before, begin to talk. Amen. Whatever you could not do before, start doing it now. In my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Now we pray to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Share your testimony. Let's see what the Lord has done for you. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear Father, thank you for your divine presence in me that makes me holy. I'm going to be thanking God. Lord, I thank you for divine presence in us that makes us holy. Thank you for divine presence in me that makes me holy. Thank you, Lord, for indeed I'm holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in your sight. For your divine presence that is in me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, I'm grateful. Tell him how grateful you are, that you are now a carrier of his divine presence in you. Lord, I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord, I'm grateful for your divine presence in me that makes me holy, unblameable, and unreprovable. In your sight, I can stand before you. I can enjoy fellowship with you, my Father. Thank you for my for your divine presence in me. I walk in the light of, the, of this truth. Declare for yourself that you walk in the light of this truth and you reign over sin, over Satan and his and circumstances. Declare it concerning yourself. No longer will you be found as a man enslaved with sin. Now you are set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now you indeed you walk in this truth. You walk in the light of this truth and reign over sin. I reign over sin. I reign over certain and circumstances of this life. Marabo Shadabranda. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Oh, yes, Lord, I bless and magnify your name. Your presence in me, Lord Jesus, makes me holy. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Baraba Shandekis Kabradosh. Radikande Makuch Kabradi. Lekata Zakata Rabashata. I bless and magnify your name, King of Glory. And I live, oh, oh, I live forever, oh Lord, in you. Unblameable, my Lord, my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I walk in the light of this truth. I reign over sickness. I reign over Satan. I reign over circumstances. Oh, thank you. I reign over sin, O Lord. Oh, the Lord has made his abode in me. Oh, Lord, I magnify your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm victorious all the way. Declare your victory. All the way, declare your victorious all the way, declare your victorious all the way, serving the Lord with joy in love. I serve the Lord, the Lord joy, joyously in love. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, oh, I'm victorious all the way. I serve the Lord joyously in love. In my Lord Jesus' name, Marabrande Makuch Gabradia, 
Oh, thank you, my Father. Kabarabashata. Yes, I'm victorious. I'm victorious. I'm victorious. I serve the Lord joyfully in love. Oh, Parabashata. Pakatarabosha. Yes, Lord, I'm full of joy. I'm full of joy. I'm full of joy. Nothing can steal my joy, O oh Lord. Nothing can seize my joy, O oh Lord. I'm full of joy. Makatosh Kabradia. I serve you joyously in love, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father, for you indeed you are gracious. Marabande Makuchka Vekarabosha. Ready Bronde, Zede Bronde, Zede Bronde, Zede Bronde, Zede Bronde. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we are grateful. Thank you, King of Glory. Hallelujah. Rakato Jara Brande Makuchka Ve. Rida Roskira Brande Makura Bashata. Hallelujah. Rakatara Brande Makuchka Ve. Redeoski Ande Makuchka Ve Zakatara Bashata. We bless and magnify your name, O Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In our Lord Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. According as, his, as, as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That will be your story from this day. Amen. Everywhere you walk, your lifestyle, your actions, your words will speak as one who have been declared holy and without blemish Amen. and without blames before him in love. Now, because you love the Father, you love the Lord Jesus, you will indeed keep his commands. Amen. Because you love the Lord Jesus, you will live above the desires of, 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 of the flesh. You will be a man that will never be enslaved by, by, the, by, by sin any longer. Amen. You will live indeed to please the Father that lives in you. Amen. Because you love him, now you are, you are has chosen you, and I declare that anything you're involved with now be chosen in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. That the works of the Lord be, be, be indeed will prevail in everything you're involved with. Amen. That that grace of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, will prevail the works of your hands. Amen. That you'll be a man that's empowered by grace. Amen. That the things you are sent to do, Lord, I thank you for your children will do with ease. Amen. I declare they will do with ease. Amen. For grace has come to make things to be done for you with ease. Amen. I declare that God's grace will call you for the people that you need that will help you. Amen. The help that you need for, for men they will attract towards you now. I declare it is made easy for you, my Lord Jesus' name. I declare that everything that you are involved with, is any way the devil have tried to steal from you in time past, I declare total restoration for you, my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. If the Lord Jesus can walk on this earth, though that Jesus is kind of stealing from his pocket, the, pocket, the ministry pocket, you never, you just never lacked anything good. But instead, he multiplied bread and fish. I declare that your part, you will only be a multiplication in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing that the enemy or the circumstances of this, circumstances, circumstances, circumstances of this life may try to do against you will prevail. I declare that in your part, you only walk in abundance. Amen. Your part that even when the devil has sent his own to steal from you. Never would any of these things affect what you are said to do. Amen. God will come to make you to be a person of abundance Amen. from glory to glory, Amen. life overflowing, as you overflow in him, you know, overflow of him, that when men encounter, they encounter God, that you will never be a person of lack. You will never be a person that will be found small or little. Amen. That you will only be from glory to glory. Amen. In my Lord Jesus' name, Amen. I declare that whatever you are involved with, from today, may your mind be conditioned to know that God is with you. Amen. May your mind be conditioned to walk in his holiness. May your mind be conditioned to know the, the, the carry of his presence. Amen. That because God is with you, that means God is involved in that thing you are doing. And because you are involved in need, and God is with you in need, I declare that that thing has come as you will, will prosper in my Lord Jesus' name. All round prosperity, unending success and absolute prosperity is just in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. You will never fail in life. You will never be small. I declare that for you now in my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. And over your nation where you are right now, I declare these words. That this nation where you are right now will prosper. Prosper. They will know the Lord that, that Lord their God. Amen. They will grow in the, the, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In my Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So we declare that the special grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit indeed abounds with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Yes. Kindly check our write-up and follow the link to download Rhapsody of Realities onto your gadget. God bless you and keep joining us. We love you.